Okay, so continuing with Stalin propaganda and cult of personality. Um, here is a propaganda poster. Um, the bottom reads, under the great Stalin's guidance, onward to communism. So once again, you have all the smiling faces of this people of the Soviet Union looking up at Stalin, who is leading them into the wonderful communist future. Over here, these are some propaganda posters that are really like um, idealizing the worker which was one of the most important kind of aspects of Soviet Union communism. So this says, join our collective farm, comrade. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means later. Um, fight against the way of laziness. So working workers were depicted as really the backbone of the Soviet Union. Um, let me open up this video real quick. So here is a little bit about the Soviet Union um, national anthem, where Stalin put his name in. Uh, we won't listen to the whole thing, but... So that was the national anthem during the Soviet Union while Stalin was in powder, right? So you can see that by inserting your name into the national anthem, people would be singing that all the time, increasing loyalty, all that jazz. Um, so the next topic and header that you should put in your notes were Stalin's economic policies, primarily focusing on industrialization in this section. So this is a quote from Stalin, and it reads, we are still the only country of the proletarian dictatorship, communist, and we are surrounded by capitalist countries, many of which are far in advance of us technically and economically. We must overtake and outstrip the advanced technology of the developed capitalist countries. That is why a fast rate of development of our industry is necessary and imperative. So here we see Stalin talking about how, you know, the Soviet Union at this point is really the only communist center. And so he's saying, we are representing communism, therefore we have to catch up socially, developmentally, and industrially if we want to have communism or bring communism a good name. So Stalin believed that industrialization was basically essential for survival of a country. While you're taking notes, remember you can shrink industrialization down to indie, all that stuff. So Stalin had a series of five-year plans that would get the Soviet Union to be at a comparable point of industrialization as all the other countries. The first five-year plan was in 1928. This primarily focused on iron and steel manufacturing, machine tools, electrical power, and transportation. Because of this five-year plan, the USSR actually did become the leader in industry in Europe. So you could say that that is a very large success of Stalin. Quotas were put in place in factories 
that basically made everybody who was working in these factories um, have a minimum amount of production. So that was one of the things that also led to the increase in production. Men and women were also encouraged to join the workforce. The second year plan occurred in 1933, uh, and this was industrialization once again in transportation. And then the third five-year plan occurred in 1938, you know, just before the outbreak of World War II. And this was also focusing on industrialization and then also militarization. So how did it work? How did the Soviet Union become, go from the least industrialized of all the European countries to the leading producer of certain industrial goods um, because of these five-year plans? The first thing that they did was they used quotas. Quotas are a minimum amount of production. So everyone, when they came to work, had a quota they had to fill. They had to produce a minimum amount of whatever they were doing. So there were rewards for meeting your quota or exceeding your quota. And then there was humiliation for not meeting your quota. It could be humiliation. It could be getting fired from your job. It could be, you know, something more severe if the secret police felt the need to get involved. Um, they also kept records of worker lateness and bad workmanship. Um, bad workers were sent to gulags. Gulags during this time period were work camps up in the far north of the Soviet Union. They were quite comparable to the concentration camps um, that we see in the early stages of World War II in Nazi-controlled territories. They were really bad places to be, and so people were obviously very scared to go there. Fear was also used to motivate worker output. Um, you know, if people are afraid of what might happen to them if they don't produce enough, they're going to produce enough. And then, very anti-communist, right? They did pay skilled workers more. Because I think even if you're going to be communist, you understand that people need some sort of incentive. So what were the results of this industrialization? So some positives was that industrialization overall was a success. The USSR became a leading superpower in industry during this time. And there was also a dramatic increase in the amount of railroad and transportation um, systems in so the Soviet Union. However, some negatives was that there was really an atmosphere of fear throughout Russia. If you're not using like freedom, money, competition to do these things, like people were afraid of not meeting these quotas and things. There was also a complete lack of consumer goods available because all of the effort and all the industry of the Soviet Union was being put in industry. It wasn't being put into making clothes for people or um, making hairbrushes or furniture or different things like that. And so when somebody needed to go buy something, there was like very little of that. There was also a lack of food. People were moving from rural areas to um, the cities to work in these factories because that's what was being pushed by the government. But there weren't people and there weren't, wasn't technology to make up for the food that was being lost. There was also a decrease in the standard of living for a time period, wouldn't last forever. And in some instances, there were poor treatment of workers in order to reach those high industrialization goals and output goals. So here's a graph that you can see. Um, you know, you have the USSR, India, Africa, China. So you have some of the like le least developed parts of the world. And you can see that for a long time, the Soviet Union was very comparable to a lot of these other less developed areas. But after the first five year plan, you see the Soviet Union kind of skyrocket past some of these less developed areas. The next header you'll put in your notes is economic policies, um, this time focusing on collectivization. So how it was in Russia before this is that Russia had very, it was mostly agricultural. 
So families had farms. They produced the food that they ate. Um, so, but what he felt is that that was not an effective way for farmers to feed the growing uh, population and the growing number of people who are working in industry and not growing their own food. So he turned family farms into collective farms. So he turned Russia's 26 million family farms into 250,000 collective farms where people and farmers were, came together to work on the same plot of land, which was, of course, all owned by the government. In order to do that, they had to get rid of the wealthy, wealthy class of farmers or the land owners. Um, they were referred to as kulaks. So between 1929 and 1930, an estimated 70 to 120 kulaks, people of this kulak social class, were killed per night in order to purge the Soviet Union of this wealthy class of farmers. So why did he decide to do this? Well, the Soviet Union, like we already talked about, needed a drastic increase in the amount of food being produced in order to support his industrialization goals. People were moving from the rural areas, from the farming communities into the cities to work on these farms, or I'm sorry, in these factories and contribute to these industrialization goals. Results. Um, the people were very angry about collectivization. They really had to be forced to do this, to become collectivized. They wanted to continue farming the way that they had. They did not want to collectively farm land with other people. So basically they were forced to work on a farm um, a certain number of days each month and then could work on their own small plot of land. Um, a large portion of the food was given to the state for an extremely low price, which meant that farmers were surviving on really small amounts of food and really low income. So this was really not a good situation for the farmers. Um, in Ukraine, which at this time was uh, controlled by the Soviet Union, the farmers resisted collectivization um, pretty heavily. So the Soviet Union police, the KGB, used force on them to force them to collectivize their farms and to join together. And basically what happened is Stalin implemented policies that led to mass starvation. Most of the crop that was grown by these Ukrainian farmers was forced to be given to the state to fund industrialization. And basically what that meant is Stalin and the Soviet Union did not leave enough food for the workers. It resulted in a huge famine, killing 25% of the population of Ukraine in one to two years, which some estimate to be six to seven million. This was a man-made famine. The policies that were put in place is what caused these people to die. This is one of those areas where like a lot of people will argue or will wonder, why do we talk about the Holocaust so much and not talk about all the people that Stalin killed? Because if you really look at the numbers, this isn't even the least amount, six to seven million, this isn't even the lowest amount of people he killed. Stalin actually were, was responsibly responsible for the murder of drastically more people than, than Hitler actually was. So here are some photos um, of the Ukraine famine. Here are some photos. This is a propaganda poster, kind of like really look at these like strong, bulky farmers. They're all working together. They're happy. They're sowing the seeds and they are working together to produce food for the Soviet Union. Um, you know, this is what it actually looked like. The farmers were not happy about it. Um, and ultimately, it didn't really lead to an increase in productivity the way that Stalin had hoped it would. Um, the next header in your uh, book will be, or in your notebook, will be social, religious, and education policies. And I'm actually going to go ahead and end this video right here. And you can pick up on your notes um, in Stalin video number three.